this video is just for informational only it's not schematics or plans of any kind so do it at your own risk but it's just things that I found that I was able to put together and make work for me um, I do have another couple another couple of considerations to think about is what your truck's carrying capacity is uh, this truck so happens to be an eight foot bed um, it's a one ton so it's capable of hauling these loads and also the Terex really isn't that heavy of a side by side weighs in around 1600 1700 pounds dry and so considering the weights it shouldn't be too big of an issue all right guys so here's what we have I'm gonna load the Terex up and let's show you how this thing works we've got two 10 foot Titan ramps we've got held down with two bolts on each ramp they're loose so they can allow to flex a little bit but that way it doesn't slide off Here we have two eyelets that are bolted in, one on each side. That's for the rear tie down points to hook up to the frame. So first let's talk about what's securing this down. So in this truck I've got a fifth wheel receiver hitch that ties the ball to the frame of the truck. What it is, I pulled the ball out and the pin goes through and I welded up some of this channel that's hooked into the frame of the truck so it's secure. I brought up made a T out of it. I brought it over to here and I made this lay inside of here so it would hold this front down when you pull the Terex up on the back it wouldn't want to lift up. So this is holding the whole thing together and it's also holding the, back, the ramps from tipping up. And then as we come back I ended up putting this piece of angle iron in and it goes all the way across both sides to essentially keep any play. These ramps, as the back tires sit on here, the ramps kind of want to go side to side. So that stabilizes them to hold them. We've got some really rigid angle here. We've got some really rigid angle here. And so it's plenty enough for support made these quick disconnect pins so I can pull the ramps out. When I undo the bolts on the front, undo those bolts there on the front, and pull these pins, and the, the ramps will come right out. Keep the pins from sliding out, welded a nut just so it can't back out of there. And originally the idea that I had was just this thin wall angle that I had in here ended up not being quite tough enough so just to be on the safe side didn't want it to be sketchy I put some of this angle iron on this side that really runs all the way to that front brace and hooks underneath of it so it's it's really solid up to there so on the front I built this frame here that bolts into there and it pivots up or down, so if I pull the ramps off, I can just lay it back against the bed. And this also bolts the top of there to keep any side-to-side, -side, keep any side-to-side -side movement. Put these guards up here so the tires can't walk off sideways. And it holds the tire in place. We also have, for tie-down points, we have an eyelet here, which the which the tire bonnet will hook into the front of here, wrap up and around. And it'll, the rear, right behind the rear of the tire, it'll hook onto here, which is supported with some angle underneath of it. I was able to get some expanded metal. It was pretty rusty. I was able just to cut it up, drop it in here, and tack it into where it's. It's solid and it gives it good traction to those rear tires so they don't slide around. So the reason I made this video is I wanted to be able to haul my Terex and be able to pull my camper trailer up to the mountains to be able to spend time when the family wanted to go together or to be able to have that, that option. 
Um, I didn't want to have to pull doubles and I didn't want to have to invest in a new trailer like a toy hauler that would be able to haul the Terex and likely I'd have to probably modify the cage anyways or chop it down so it fit um, just because they're a little bit taller than most of the side-by-sides with their tall cage. But I didn't want to do what I'd seen online and get the back wheels and the center of gravity up on top of the bed uh, just for being top heavy and all that. Hindsight, maybe it would have been better. Once I had sketched up this idea, I was kind of committed to at least trying it. What I had to do is use 100% scrap metal um, that between me and what my uncle have at his shop. We're going to try and use some, some grip strut and some angle iron that we have and keep it light enough weight to where it can be disassembled and moved by hand, but yet be able to set up quickly and have it mount into the truck itself. So just stay tuned and see how it turns out. So on this old trailer there was some grip strut. So we cut the bolts off and there was a big old tube of 12 laying inside of here. It's all rotted, just got it all busted out. Moving on to the next one. It's all rotted, but it should come out easy. The rear tires were too wide to fit through the tailgate entrance. So I had to end up extending the rack out a little bit. I was hoping to get the rear wheels just inside the tailgate space and have the front up and over the toolbox, but as things evolved, I ended up sliding it back and trying to make it so it would work either way. And I figured worst case, I'd have to get a longer receiver that would stick out just a little bit more, to be able to get my clearance and not have the rack itself hit the front of the camper trailer or propane tanks on the front of the camper trailer. <clears throat> As I was welding there was a lot of film and stuff from all that metal being scrap metal. There was either rust or, or a film build up on the galvanized and it made it really hard to weld. So my welds don't look great but they'll hold. They're stronger than the steel that I'm using. Alright I just tacked this front lip on there. Uh, two bolts are going to hold the Titan ramp at 17 inches going off the truck. 10 foot fold and a half aluminum ramp. I uh, just got everything straightened out, tacked on, uh, just got to put it up in the truck and see if it's still going to work just like the other ramp, it's the exact opposite. I also have a box fan going to try and keep the galvanized smoke out of my face but not quite blowing the gas from the welder. So let's go throw it in the truck and see where the hinges need to go for the ramp. All right, so sliding it in here. Not a bad fit. The tailgate is gonna be removed while I'm driving. I plan on anyways. So the rear tires are gonna sit here because they're too wide to go in between that brace where the tailgate mounts, but the front's a little more narrow. So I'm gonna set the ramp up here and see where it needs to sit so that we can get those hinges welded on. So what I'm gonna do now Gonna get my hinge ready and my plan is to take a hole saw, bore a hole out here so I can slide a pin in. This will be welded to the ramp face and this will be welded to the, to the actual angle brackets to complete the hinge. I'm taking a hole saw, an old hole saw, and I'm gonna bore that. Got the ramp just rest on the toolbox for now. Down the road I'm gonna figure out exactly where that Terex needs to be and then cut the front of the ramp off so I can still get the toolbox open pushed my pin through, slid this ramp back to where it needs to be, drew me a line. I'm going to go tack up these pieces and then weld this piece up onto the ramp itself. Alright, so I just set it back in the truck. The ramp kind of needs to dove out a little bit because the front tires are so wide, but uh, that's kind of the angle that I'm trying to get. But the tacks look good, so probably going to start welding everything up and add in my extra braces. So the plan to tie this all together, I want to be able to tie this fifth wheel ball that I have in the bed of the truck. I want to be able to take that out and essentially this whole setup will pin into the frame of the truck so it'll hold it from lifting up 
as I'm pulling up and on, and it'll also keep it from tipping side to side, and it should keep it a little more rigid. So my plan is, I've got a little bit smaller piece of receiver sleeve that'll go right down in the hole. It'll be sitting down in there. Cut it off square on the top, weld this right on top to make a T, bar that goes across. What I'm going to do over here is I cut off a piece of strut, set it in here, I've got my marks measured for center. I'm going to notch down about halfway, so probably about an inch and a half. This will sit in that saddle, so these will be flat face to flat face. In the bottom I'm going to weld some nuts, some big half or three quarter inch nuts, maybe two of them here, and then I'll pre-drill these holes. So essentially I come in, slide this on, run the two bolts down, other side two bolts down, should tie it in with the truck. So I'm going to weld the nuts on the back side of these holes, flip this over, have the nuts welded on there. So when I slide this down in here, I have a hole, push through and it'll bolt right down and tension up, holding both these two together. I to have my inch and a half receiver sleeve, it's like a square tube thick wall. Got it cut to the right depth to where it'll sit in the pin. And this should be flush with the top. I made a mark flush with the top of my bed and measured the difference. I needed to be exactly two inches above the top of the bed. So I've got my two inches there. I'm going to tack it on and see how it fits. Welding this galvanized is sure is stinky. Okay, so I just pulled the pin out from underneath the truck and slid it down in there and the pin went through. So it's locked in there pretty tight. As you can see now, pretty solid, fits good. All I need to do, get the nuts welded in here. All I need to do is transpose those marks up onto this top piece, drill some oversized holes here so I can run those bolts down in, hold it down. Um, after I drill those holes, I'm going to finish welding this and everything else. So for the top piece, I laid this on there, traced around it, took a die grinder, and I notched it so that I can get some of this square tubing. Slide down in here so I can weld it in and weld it all around. And this will be my vertical supports. All right, it took me about two minutes on the grinder. Now I have another pin. As I was jumping on this and putting a lot of weight, that's starting to twist quite a bit. So we decided to get an extra stiffener in here. So we got another piece of angle we're just adding to it to got it notched to slide up and under that piece there. And weld all the way out on the back here. So essentially, it'll give us a nice stronger backbone than this metal here. If I was to do the whole project again. I would have just used something heavier on here. We thought it was going to work, but with the way it comes. All right, so here's how it's looking now. I've got the holes drilled for the ramp. On both the holes drilled for the two 10 foot Titan ramps. I have this angle iron that I put in and bolted it in to be a stiffener for this galvanized that just did not seem like it was going to be able to support. When I changed up the plans, I just ran a second stiffener here. Welded on a coupler nut here so that we can have this cross brace go all the way across and hook to the far side to keep this from tilting as it moves. It was had a lot of play side to side. All right, so it's looking good. A few more things I need to finish up on next. 
will be take a little piece of angle iron here, bring it out, drill a hole and weld the nut on the back. So this ramp will attach permanently to this to keep it from going up or down. Still haven't decided on the top of the ramp. I wanna get the Terex up on here and see how it's gonna look before I cut this off and how long I wanna leave it. That way I can still have access to my toolbox. All right, so the project is getting a lot closer. Now to figure out the front heights and everything that I need, I'm going to just try and get the Terex in there. See if I can load it up, see how well it fits, what we need to adjust, if we can adjust the front down or do some cutting and see what happens from there. All right, so this is how it sits. What I'm working on now is I put it in the bed of the truck. I was able to get my marks on the side of how far it needs to be to where it doesn't touch the bed itself. And then cut some angle iron pieces here to make a tab. And the plan is to weld this to the ramp and then have a hole drilled right here where I can uh, weld a bolt on the bottom. So what I'm using for equipment is I have an older Lincoln Electric power MIG. It's 220. Have a couple of grinders. I had one with a flap wheel and one with a cutoff disc on there. Using a lot of the, right here we have a Bosch chop saw. It also makes it a lot easier if you have a variety of C clamps or other clamps, a square, and then some magnetic squares there help. It's always good to have a good set of working gloves to be able to move the steel and not get cut. You also want a good set of welding gloves. This is an old helmet we've been using for years that's finally starting to kind of die on us. So I was very curious. I was going to go buy a nice Lincoln or possibly a Miller helmet. Just got on Amazon and actually started looking and found this one with over 700 views and it was about $26, $27, and so I was like, you know what, I'll give it a shot, worst case, Amazon will send it back. But first use, I was actually very surprised at uh, the clarity you could see through the lens and the auto darkening and how it worked. It was actually a very good helmet for the price. Is it gonna last forever? No, I have several welding projects this spring, as you'll see coming up. Um, I want to build a rack for the back of the Terex that goes in the receiver hitch of the Terex itself, the side-by-side. -side. And then also I plan on doing a drill pipe fence around my pasture with a five-foot no-climb horse fence around it, so stay tuned. Also for drilling holes, it's always nice to have a drill press. This is kind of a, a neat old drill press that my uncle has. Runs off of a leather belt. Very, very cool. I've been using this other old drill press here. So, that's what we've been using to drill most of the holes or it's good to have a good hand drill. Went to the bolt bin and found an extra nut laying around that I was able just to weld on here so that I can lift that up, pull the ramp pins out. Uh, that'll keep it from coming loose and sliding out while I'm driving. Right, we cut off the expanded metal and I cut it at an angle to fix the taper on that side and just laid it in there. Now I'm going to tack weld some of the joints to hold it down and that'll help support that rear tire so it doesn't fall through. Got these little pieces of inch and a half angle. I'm cutting them off and I'm going to make me a little box that fits up and goes around the front and that'll create a kind of a little bit of a cage so the tires can't go side to side or off. Right, so the plan today is to finish welding up these all the way around. And then the next step is to, I got a little piece of inch and a half angle in here I'm going to place underneath the grip strut. I notched the corner so it'll fit. Um, plan is, is to weld up the inside edges in here, drill down through, and put one of these eyelets up from the bottom. The 
As you can see, I got the eye bolt and the angle iron is right here behind this. So I'll end up drilling a hole and sucking it right through there so that I can tie the back side of the front tire down. I pulled this front cross brace back off and ground off the paint that I'd already painted, sunk a ring into one of the holes, just like that. And I'm gonna weld that up since it's square tubing and I can't really get a nut on the back there. Just a quick, easy fix. That way I'll have a strap for the, that way I'll have a strap hook for the front that'll loop around the back side Alright, so I screwed and epoxied some rubber strip that I had laying around. It's about an inch wide. Need some epoxy. It's just at least to hold that in place. So this can come over and sit against the side of the bed. And next, just got the holes drilled for this. got those holes drilled so I can bolt that down and it'll keep the ramp nice and tight against the side of the bed. All right I've got uh, some of the metal stood up and ready to just kind of do a final cleanup. Um, deburring, getting rid of sharp edges, cleaning up a little bit. So what I have is I've got my angle grinder here, um, some personal protective equipment, earplugs, glasses, and some leather gloves, and then some various kinds of um, wheels and cutoff discs. Um, cutoff discs to cut off any sharp edges that I feel like are going to be kind of a pain. Um, wire wheel to clean up any welding burrs or anything we need to take off of there. And some flap discs for polishing up, getting ready for, for some paint. So I'm going to get it all cleaned up and polished, going to do all the, all the pieces, and then I'm going to start painting. So I've hit these all with black and had some extra colors to kind of use as a base coat. But the color that I really like on a lot of my metal projects has been this hammered Rust-Oleum. It's a black color. But I don't know if you can see, but it's like a textured black, almost kind of with a hint of gray, kind of a graphite gray in there. I've done it on some airboat cages and some other projects. If you can see it, but it kind of gives it that textured look. A little bit of runs, but I'm not looking for perfection. All right, I got everything kind of smoothed out, so even the bolt holes and everything aren't, don't have sharp edges on them anymore. Come back and do uh, you want to hit some of the hard areas to hit first, and then come back and do a nice full layer across the top. See how it turns out. As long as the Terex doesn't fall off. Should be good. All right, so I got the first three pieces, the first coat on there. Now I'm gonna go clean up the other big base pieces and we'll paint those next. Hi. Look at me.
here's a look at the final product all painted and installed in the truck and then next we're going to load the Terex on the back and see how she does. Okay, I'm just getting back in the Terex and gonna load it up on the truck and show you guys how we strap this thing down. It took a lot of planning and thinking to see what was actually gonna work and the hardest part was there wasn't really much online that I was able to, to find. Everything that I found was up on top of the bed um, and I just wanted to keep that center of gravity low. Work how it is, it does kind of take up a lot of the bed space. I can still fit some stuff underneath of it before I pull it up and on and I can fit some Costco totes up underneath the back. But I also learned a lot doing it. Um, I like it how it is. If I was to do it again, there's a few things that I might change. Okay, so for now, I'm putting those tighten ramps, folding them in half, laying them right on top of the other ramp, and then tying them down. So, should be good. Got our bonnet straps on. Got our rear shock strap on. Both sides. Bolted down to that. It's looking good. All right, we're loaded up. We're just leaving the first time using the camper trailer Terex combo. And it worked really well. See how we do on the way home. Here's a look at the coupler. It's a little bit long, but I chopped it down from a camper trailer coupler that was about another two feet longer than that so with this trailer being pretty light I don't have water nothing loaded in it yet I just figured we'd give it a shot and make sure it was working good so I know there's a lot of other things that I could have done to speed up the process um, I spent a lot of time just staring at the project and trying to make sure that what I was about to do would work instead of just start welding pieces together and, but trying to design kind of a new concept that I hadn't found and make sure that it was going to work out right for what I needed it to. Um, it did take a little bit longer plus all the steel that I was using was scrap metal and so we had to just laying around my uncle's shop and he was nice enough to let me just kind of cut and chop a bunch of extra steel what we could find and took extra time to 
wire wheel or use a flap disc and take the paint and the rust off to get that metal down to the bare surface so it'd have a better weld and then also afterwards be able to paint it better. But, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more of our DIY videos. We're hoping to do a lot more DIY hunts and DIY projects and start filming those and putting those on the channel here. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll talk to you guys later.